And welcome back. This is the third and final part of our advanced topics um, midterm review. We only have question number 10 left. Um, no need to rush through, but this will be a, a short part. Uh, let's look. Uh, notice in this one, uh, this doesn't give you any information about the problem. You need to look for this term called resonance. Since you're going to be drawing a resonance, or you're going to be drawing resonance structures, that means that a multiple bond has to coexist with a single bond uh, attached to a central atom. Uh, for example, ozone, O3, it turns out contains a double bond as well as a single bond. Uh, and that's how one of the resonance forms would look like that. Um, oops, I added one too many here. Uh, now, now we're fine. But the question naturally arises, well, why should the double bond be there and not right there? Well, for this reason, we like to imagine that the double bond oscillates and vibrates between positions, like going back and forth, back and forth between positions. Um, it's hard to capture that in a single drawing, although you can. Uh, for that reason, uh, we still continue uh, to write resonance forms. So the other way of drawing this molecule would, again, to be retain the shape of the molecule. But instead of having the double bond here, we move the double bond over here. And we imagine that the double bond is jumping back and forth between these two positions. Thus, there are two what we call resonance forms which gives a better idea of um, where the double bond is going to be on average. Half the time it's here and half of the time it's there. Again, it's just um, kind of an analogy. It's not, in reality, the double bond is not jumping back between two different locations. It's a useful fiction, a useful analogy, um, which I'll point out as we go through this question. Now, notice we're talking about something called CO3. Now, as I said, since it's resonance, we are going to expect to see single bonds, but we're going to need to see a multiple bond in there as well. It's going to typically be a double bond. So we start off by drawing carbon in the center. Uh, we, of course, always have at least single bonds. But since it's going to be resonance, we know that one of them is going to have to be a double bond. Uh, there are reasons you might say, well, why not a triple bond? Well, if you actually calculated the number of valence electrons in this, you would see that it's not possible for that to be a triple bond. Additionally, oxygen is simply incapable of uh, uh, holding a triple bond. Uh, it's going to be a double bond. So what do we have here? Um, we need to finish off the molecule. 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, six and eight. Uh, of course, you want to identify this as being a negatively charged ion. Um, as I said, this double bond could also be in this location, or it could be in that location. So I'm going to have to draw in total three resonance structures. Carbon O, O, O. Instead of having the double bond where it was, I'm going to put it here. And these others are going to be uh, single bonds. And I want to make certain that all of my oxygens are quote unquote happy that they have a complete valence shell. Um, I want to indicate that it also has a negative two charge. I have one more to draw. Uh, there's one place that the double bond has not yet uh, um, vibrated, so to speak, towards. And it is in this position right there. So now I have all three possible states, resonance states, uh, for this particular molecule to exist in. Make sure that your O's are all happy, and of course communicate that this overall molecule has a negative two charge. So there are three resonance structures for CO3 with a minus two charge. All right, using one of the resonance structures, now we can count up the number of what we call sigma bonds, sig signified in Greek by that, and a pi bond. A little refresher, uh, I could have, let's imagine that we have bonds between carbon 
a single bond between two carbons, a double bond between two carbons, and a triple bond between two carbons. Uh, if you have a single bond, a single bond is strictly sigma. So a single bond has one sigma. A double bond has one sigma, and the other is called a pi bond. So a double has one sigma and one pi. A triple bond has one sigma, and the other two bonds that form are called pi bonds. So a triple bond has a sigma, a pi, and another pi. So if I look at one of these forms, well, I'll start off with the single bonds. Notice I have a sigma and a sigma. I said in a double bond has a sigma and a pi. So when I count these up, I see that I have three sigma and just one pi bond. Okay, uh, number uh, 10C, let's read this one. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice question. The bond length of CO is 143, and the bond length of C double bond O is 122 picometers. Estimate the bond length of the bond between carbon and oxygen in the carbonate ion. Well, it turns out that as a consequence of resonance, this is never truly, uh, and this are never truly pure single bonds, and this is never purely a double bond. Why? Because at another moment, we imagine that this double bond becomes a single bond, and this single bond becomes a double bond. So in reality, each of these bonding domains is an average length. It's somewhere between the length of a single bond and a double bond. Well, we see here, the question actually tells us which is longer. It tells us that a single bond is longer. And in this case, it's 143 picometers. And let's call a single bond a number one bond. A double bond is shorter. It's 122 picometers. Since these are smears, they are averages, of single and double bonds. Oh, hi. How are you? Good to see you. Oh, my goodness. Hello. How are you? <laughs> old, old friends. Since we have to think of these as uh, being somewhere on average uh, being a single bond and a double bond, we know that they're going to be somewhere in the middle. Now, be careful. Your first instinct would be to say, well, why don't I just, I just take the average of a single bond and a double bond? And that would give me a bond length of 132.5. Well, that's dangerous because that would mean that such a bond is half the time just like a, a single bond and the other half the time a double bond. But that can't be the case because two of the three bonds are single bonds. Only one of the three bonds is a double bond. So more of the time, or think of it this way, since the average bond is influenced by two single bonds and only by one double bond, an average bond is going to be closer in character to a single bond, meaning that the average length of this bond is going to be shorter than 143, but it's going to be greater than 132.5. You can also think of it this way. I can calculate the average bond length is equal to the number of bonds divided by the number of domains. So notice in this particular central atom, uh, there are a total of one, two, three, four bonds. These are, however, distributed over three domains. So we would say that this is a one and a third bond. Now, by comparison, 1.5 1, 1 is a one and a half bond. A one and a third bond is clearly in between a one and a half bond, which would be 132.5, and a single bond, which is 143. So this is as you wish. You can just, just as long as whatever you choose here is less than 143 and greater than 132. I don't know, let's say 137 gets equally between them. Okay, but as long, we won't be too rigid, as long as it's in between these two values.
Okay. With that said, um, we have finished our review of um, the, for the advanced topics. Um, I hope you enjoy watching this as much as I enjoyed making it and see you in extra help, my friends. Nothing can make up for a live teaching always. Uh, God bless you.